55 years ago when I was working in Sweden, Stockholm, the world's greatest tenor. Only those who know his name will recognize it. His name was Jussi Björling. Oh, yes. And he was the Caruso of the North. He heard me just singing student songs with the whole Swedish students, most of us half gone, of course. <laughs> uh, Best way to say it. And he came up to me and he said, uh, what are you doing with your life? And I said, well, Mr. Buring, which of course I was very surprised. And I said, well, Mr. Buring, I'm trying to learn to be an actor. And he said, uh, oh. he said no. No, 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 no. He said, that's not what you should be. He said, I've been listening to you, and you have a voice. And I said, well, maybe, but uh, I've never had any training. And uh, I can't read music. He said, no, that's not what I mean. You have the instrument, the vocal instrument. You must do something about it. All this nonsense about acting. You must be a singer. He, of course, meant basically an opera singer. So he said, come to the Stockholm Opera House tomorrow at 11 o'clock in the morning and stand on the stage and sing something, which, of course, absolutely paralyzed me. Imagine, <laughs> <laughs> not the world's greatest singer. And he had uh, another very fine singer there who was the boss of the opera. So I stood on the stage, no care, no, no nothing. And I just made sounds, let's put it that way. That seems to be the thing these days, <laughs> the sound. And so I sang something. I think I tried to sing a serenade from Don Giovanni. It sounded much more like a call to arms. <laughs> <laughs> and I blurted it out. And at the end of it, there was a conversation that came forward. They said, look, you were given this voice, which I inherited through my mother, who was a tremendous soprano, but then a professional. And her grandparents, my great grandparents, founded the first opera company in Australia in the about 1850s, something like that. And my great grandmother was known as the Tasmanian Nightingale. She was a stunning singer and for Melbourne and in some cases people said better. Uh, she and her five daughters, my great aunts, two of whom I knew, and they were very young, very young, and they were very young. Uh, they all sang. And in those days, of course, there were no cars or anything like that, as far as I know. She must have been an extraordinary, indomitable woman because she took these five very beautiful girls in covered wagons to sing to the miners in the tin mines, the gold mines. And uh, that in itself is an achievement. They traveled all over the place. They sang in various parts of the world, including to the Dowager Queen of Hawaii, Lilivia Kalani, I think her name was. And you probably know that better than me. Anyway, the reason I mentioned that is because obviously it's in the blood. It's a genetic thing which came from the great grandparents, skipped my grandfather, which as far as I know, sing at all, my mother's father, went to my mother, had a very good voice, she was very dramatic, and she always used her voice very dramatically throughout her entire life. That's <laughs> <laughs> the most dramatic actress I've ever known in my life. And uh, when I said uh, one day, 46, that I decided I'd be an actor. She gave what is known as a Victoria.